welcome to a new Flowix video tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the image element. Using this element allows you to add images to your graphics. These images could be for example your TV channel logo, sponsors, and user avatars in case to show social content. The image element is under the building blocks and after you have added this element to the tree, you can upload an image from the inspector next to the source. The supported formats are JPG, PNG, Animated GIF, and SVG, and the maximum supported size is 5 MB. If you click on Source, you can enable the Show on Remote Control toggle that will allow you to change or remove your image from the remote control during the live operation. When using the image element on the inspector, you will see the image settings, which are the image size and position. Regarding the image size, you will find fit. The image will scale until it gets contained on the container's width or height, keeping its original proportions and not cropping. Fill. The background will scale until it covers the entire container's area, keeping its original proportion but getting cropped if needed. You can use the position controls to move the cropping window. Stretch. The image will stretch to fully cover the entire container area, losing its natural proportions. No position adjustment is possible in this mode. And natural size. The image will be displayed on its natural width and height in pixels. Image position allows you to set where the image is placed this option is not available for the image size stretch. For the social media avatars, you have the possibility to add a fallback image, which is actually a backup image. Use it when working with dynamic images such as post avatars. So in case the user avatar is empty, the fallback image will be displayed. Another property of this element is that you can add a mask to it. For example, we have this image. We click on Add a Mask and we can choose from either adding an image mask or gradient mask. For this example, we will be using the gradient mask. The next property we will find on the image inspector is the conditional visibility. But this one is only available if our image is connected to a provider. In the following example, we have two images connected to a poll with a right answer through a mechanic provider. Each image has a conditional visibility enabled. The condition is that the poll status is closed. If that is false, then the graphic will show the question mark. But if the value is true, then the graphic will show the image with the right answer. And how do we display this? Well, we open the remote control click on the gear wheel icon and see that the poll is open and that is why the graphic is showing the question mark once we close the poll the graphic will automatically show the image with the correct answer and the last property we will find is events this will allow you to add interaction to your graphics so the host in the studio can operate it on a touch screen so for this example I have already added an arrow image for the next action and now I will create an arrow for the previous action. What I will do is duplicate the element by doing Ctrl C and then Ctrl V. Now, using the rotation property, I'm going to turn the arrow 180 degrees. I will change its name to previous, and now I have my two arrows. Finally, I will configure the event. From the output, let's click on the arrows to simulate we are in a studio, touching the screen to move forward or backward between posts. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.